Now one of the things I want to do to my telescope to improve it is going to be the stability in the z-axis like this. So with these bearings here on the wood, we've got a, a couple of problems. For one thing, they, they kind of grab a little bit. Now it, it may not seem like it, but there's a friction, quite a bit of friction between the plastic and the wood. And the, when you're trying to do a really fine movement at high magnification, what happens is it, it jiggles all over the screen because this is just not quite smooth enough. So what I want to do is I want to replace these, uh, this type of bearing here for something a little bit more improved and see if we can get a nice, smooth, gentle action with no jerking whatsoever. So the first thing I need to do is reduce the box mount. And so I'm going to build new sides that accommodate the bearing hole and then cut a slot on top so that we can slide the axle down into the assembly and make it a lot easier to put together. So the first thing I'm doing is cut my pieces to fit. Now just go ahead and use the actual part as a template. Now I may drill through, but I'm going to go ahead and repeat it on this one in case I have trouble drilling through. Won't take very long. If I don't need the second set of lines, then I won't use them. Put that right in the center. I can pretty much see it. Now I can just drill my holes. It's a lot easier to assemble this if it's clamped together, so I'm going to go ahead and do that now. Now when you're working with a Lazy Susan, it's going to be a lot easier if you will drill an access hole so that you can spin it around and then you can put the bolts in and tighten them without having to take anything else apart. And now it's very simple to attach the Lazy Susan to the bottom of the telescope mounting box. Here is where that access hole comes in handy because now you can put each bolt in without taking anything apart. The bearings I used here are Timken 203FF and I'll put a product link in the description below and they work really well for this project. Alright, so this part right here holds the bearing and then uh, you can put this little cap on and there's a divot here which will allow the inner race to spin freely but it'll hold the outer race and so the bearing won't slide. Now, there's the shaft. I made it like a spline and I needed it really big and then I have this clearance grooves here so you can put the screws in. So this mounts like this and then you slide the bearing on and this mounts to the inside and that should give us a nice smooth uh, z-axis bearing. Okay, now we're ready to mount this on the telescope, so we'll go ahead and thread these through the shafts on each side. Slide it down the access holes. Here, just uh, thread these in very carefully and then tighten them up. 
All right, we have this all installed. And then here's the new action. And it just glides, just like glass. So the next thing I want to do is I want to be able to stabilize this. Now I've tried braking from the axle and putting various brakes on and whatnot and that's pretty hard because there's so much torque. You have a foot and a half out here at the end and it's pretty hard to stop it on the axle. So what I'm going to try this time is I'm going to use uh, a half inch rod. I don't have any more steel or aluminum but I can what I can do is I can put two pivots and then put it on this outside rod like this and then put a brake up here and that gives me the stability of having a lot of leverage uh, to stabilize it not from the axle but from much farther out on the telescope. So let's give that a try. So here's what I've come up with in order to have a little bit of leverage and have a good stopping thing. We need, we need some leverage and we need to be able to stop the telescope exactly where we want to. So this connection right here would be one of the lower rods on the telescope and it would move up and down. And then we have a, a pivot here, so this can pivot because the angle changes. And we'll put a bolt through the frame of the mount like this and then we can uh, put a stop on and then that will fix it in one location. Now we can upgrade this later and put a nice knob on and make it fancy but for right now I'd like to see, make sure that it works and so let's put it together and test it and then we can always upgrade it. So here I've drilled a hole that will accept this screw right here so let's put this on the inside and then put it through that hole Now looking this way, you can see how this will work. As the telescope moves up and down, the angle of this rod changes. And so we need to be able to follow that. And so that's what this swivel is for. Okay, so that'll be any angle. And then this will change up and down. And now this swivels because of this bolt here that's mounted to the side of the mount. So I'm going to take the lower cell off and mount this and show you how this works. All right, I have mounted it to the lower bracket here, and then let me show you how this works. So you can now go, you can take the scope all the way horizontal, or you could take it all the way vertical, and then you just need to tighten this. And once you tighten that, that's fixed. And it can be set at any angle. And now I have a way of holding this without a lot of friction and grabbing and whatnot from those other Z bearings. So this is really, really smooth. And I think that's gonna make this a lot easier. So let's take this out and give it a try. Well, here we are in the late afternoon and I happened to get a shot of the moon. So let's try it. Okay, so I've got that in there. Now let me do a micro adjustment and see how slowly I can do this. And you see I've already got my hands off and that's pretty steady. So that's a huge improvement over the other axes because that would have jumped all over the screen. like I need to get that a little bit in focus. But the point is, is that the z-axis is considerably easier and it's more steady. So I'm really pleased with the preliminary results. So here's a better video a little bit later. Uh, I apologize for having such a high glare on the screen in the middle of the daytime, but the z-axis upgrade has really helped a lot and it holds the telescope very steady. So I'm pretty happy with it.